this transform gizmo and uh, at the moment we're actually rotating this teapot relative to the world uh, relative to the view I should say so if I do a rotation you can see that uh, the axis of this teapot appears to remain uh, static uh, that is the axis is running still along the world but if I go to here and I change my reference to uh, local you can see that the axis of the teapot are actually altered and if I rotate the teapot you can see that the axes do actually change and stay relative to the teapot uh, this is in reality exactly what's happening uh, the rotation translation uh, everything of this teapot is actually an offset from the center of the world um, so when I actually rotate the teapot uh, it does actually maintain its own rotation uh, which you can see here I'll change it to world sorry I'll change it to view and you can see that it's actually relative to the world again uh, screen it actually becomes relative to the screen so as I rotate around you can see that the gizmo is actually based on the the actual view that we have of the teapot uh, which can be useful sometimes uh, if you want to rotate say the teapot on that axis but in recent versions of Max it's pretty much become superseded by using uh, the outer ring of the rotation gizmo uh, as that pretty much does the same kind of thing so really not that useful I suppose um, then you have parent uh, which is based on uh, the parent of the teapot if I link the teapot using the link tool over here uh, to another object uh, then you can actually use the transform um, of the parent um, and uh, that has uh, applications in various uh, different situations uh, which we'll go into later so for now let's put it back to view um, something that can also happen uh, with uh, translations is that they're based on one point in space which you can see here on the teapot but what happens is if you have actually two objects selected and you want to transform both of them uh, well let's create a teapot and I'll use this method which I'll go into later so there we go I've got two teapots I'm going to select them both using my marquee and you can see that what Max has done is it's found an average point in the middle of the two teapots and uh, now if I rotate you can see it's actually rotating the teapots around their common center which is basically just a uh, temporary uh, solution to uh, the situation that you have in Max um, if I create a third teapot which I'll use the same method again move this teapot over here there we are created a third teapot I do a selection you can see again it's created a transform in the middle of the three teapots and uh, if I transform those teapots using that it's based on that this really becomes much more evident when you rotate the teapots you can see they're all rotating around this common center um, let's say though that we wanted to transform the teapots around their own uh, centers and you can do that by changing the reference system using uh, this option and you can see that the icon uh, basically suggests that uh, it's using a pivot uh, point um, on each object and you can see they're all rotating around their own local axis so again that's pretty useful and you can also have a common there we go which was the default and you can also use transform coordinate center and uh, that allows you to rotate the teapots around the center of the world so again different applications for different situations um, to the right of this is the uh, manipulator activation button uh, which we'll go into uh, possibly in this DVD I'm not sure if I've actually come to that I think but basically manipulators are um, actually let me just show you quickly because it's worth uh, having a look at if I create another teapot oops if I undo that get rid of that okay we've got a teapot there which is actually a little bit tiddly so let's make it uh, substantially bigger and uh, I'll turn on uh, manipulator mode and you can see you've got a green circle if I grab that you can see I can actually scale the teapot so this actually isn't scaling the teapot I really shouldn't say that it's actually changing the radius of the teapot over here uh, which is a basic creation parameter um, so let's get rid of the teapot here we have the 3d snaps uh, these allow you to basically limit uh, the way you select objects in the scene 
Um, as an example, there's a rotation snap, the angle snap. If I turn on rotation, you can see now that I can actually rotate the torus in steps of 5 degrees, which you can see here on this counter. If I move around there, there you go, you can see the counter stuck on 5 degree increments. If I turn it off and do it again, you can see that it's actually much finer, the control there. And turn that on, right click on it, you can see you can actually set up the uh, angle snap there. So I'll put that up to 10. Just change that to 10. There we go. And now if I rotate, have it actually turned on, might be useful. Now if I rotate, I'm limited to degree of rotations of just 10 degrees. So a very useful tool, which, especially the angle snap, I use that all the time. Um, but it's the same thing for 3D snaps, um, percentage snaps. They're all very useful. Um, and they use quite a lot when you're modeling. Uh, to the right of these tools, the snap tools, you have the uh, selection set tool. Uh, selection sets are basically a quick way of creating groups of objects. And uh, they were more popular in Max. Well, actually, they were the only system in Max uh, previous to, I think it was Max 5. And um, if I create uh, two tori um, and select the two, and I'll create a selection set, and we'll call it uh, my voids there we are press return and now if I go here you can see the selection co set called my toroids I select that and they're both selected so it's a quick way of basically you know getting groups of objects and being able to select them very quickly uh, this button actually allows you to uh, go into the s uh, name selection set editor uh, which has a list of the selection sets and you can open those up you can take objects out of them move them around delete them uh, you're not actually deleting the objects, you're just removing them from that particular selection set. So it's a kind of rudimentary uh, layer system, which has been superseded now pretty much by the uh, new layer system in Mac, so not really used that much anymore, but uh, useful and none the same with legacy files that you may get, uh, where selection sets were the only method of organizing the scene, so uh, it's quite useful to have that option. And to the right of the selection sets, we have the mirror tool, um, which isn't really that easy to uh, demonstrate with a torus. So let's get rid of the torus and let's create a teapot again. Uh, really love my teapots. Uh, they're very useful as basic objects for render testing and uh, you know just doing basic tests in Max, uh, dynamics, anything you re want really. Uh, it's just nice to have uh, a basic object which uh, you can uh, do some quite simple things with. Um, so let's mirror it. Oof, there we go. Uh, it's mirrored it and you can see it's uh, brought up a little dialog which acts, asks you um, which axis it should be mirrored on so you can choose different axes um, or you can do a combination of axes that isn't really that evident what, what's happening there but it's actually doing it on Z and X or Y and Z or X and Y but because the, the teapot is actually pretty symmetrical uh, you don't really see that much difference from doing uh, just single axes uh, mirroring uh, you can also mirror the object and offset it um, off its axis. Um, let's just put that back to there. And you can also choose to mirror the object and copy it at the same time. So you could create a copy. You can see you've got the original and then you've got the copy. Or you could create an instance or a reference. Um, and you can also mirror IK limits, which is something that you'll come into later, um, as we will with uh, copying and instancing and referencing what those actually mean. So for now we'll cancel that and we'll go back to the original teapot. To the right of that tool we then have the s align tool and uh, what this allows us to do if I create another object we'll create uh, a box here. Uh, these two objects have their own axes they have their own pivot points you know the center of which the object pivots around and uh, let's say we want to get this object and we want to snap it to the position of this object uh, well, you do that with the snap tool. So you click on the snap tool, sorry, the align tool, you click on the target, and then it brings up a little dialog, and you can choose exactly what it uses to align the two objects. So in this case, we're going to do X, Y, and Z position, and it's using the, the, the center of the two objects. Um, in this case, well, most of the time, actually, you would probably want to use the pivot point. So now it's using the pivot points of the both objects to uh, align the teapot to the cube, uh, which is very useful. Um, now, something else that you might do is you might have rotated 
uh, the teapot. Uh, so let's cancel that and do that so we can show